Hello and welcome to today's webinar. We are really excited you could join us today. We're going to be talking about how to upgrade hospitality networks and reclaim bandwidth with the new ABR receiver. Uh, before we get started, uh, we are going to just wait a couple moments and, uh, and let people trickle in, but some of you uh, have arrived on time, so we are going to just show a quick video while we wait. Bear with me. TV is constantly evolving. Consuming content has shifted rapidly from the living room to streaming services that can be accessed on any device, in any location, anywhere in the world. But just because your residential subscribers expect and are ready for modernized multi-screen video delivery doesn't mean that your business customers are. VZ Smart, Modular, and Easy-to-Use Edge solutions are the complete package. We help TV operators maximize revenues from hospitality accounts with minimal service disruption. From many hotels, multi-dwelling units, hospitals, and other hospitality accounts, complete technology overhauls are expensive and often impractical, especially when there is a simple alternative. VZ's carrier-grade video platforms are designed for flexibility and operational efficiency, essential for edge processing. We bridge seamlessly between analog and digital networks, connecting bought and paid-for legacy systems with modern video content distribution, complete with centralized management and monitoring. When video processing happens at the edge, no screen is left behind. Any desired format can be supported, QAM, IP, multi-screen, or even analog. Need to include local content? No problem. Our channel insertion solutions ensure that content lineups are complete for each unique property. Want to repurpose the adaptive bitrate or ABR streams used for residential networks? VC makes this possible with our professional ABR receiver. Remove duplication in your head end and convert ABR video back to transport stream at the edge. 4K TVs, tablets, or exercise equipment screens. Why choose? The TV isn't going anywhere, and neither are many of the existing systems customers use to deliver quality viewing. Let us make your life easier. That's what we do. That's what we do very well. And over 2,500 customers in over 150 countries agree. Welcome to the world of VZ. And I'm just going to show one more quick video and then we will get started. The technologies that we use today are super amazing. The rates of innovation is accelerating and it's mind blowing. But at the same time, it also opens the door for a lot of bad things to happen. Because if it falls to the wrong hands, then it could be devastating. Veramatrix thrives in environments where we're helping people create amazing experiences, but security is not their core competency. And so we provide the expertise so that security doesn't have to be something they have to worry about. It's just done. When we did our first virtual premiere with Veramatrix, we were trying to get this tech stack set up and the team at Veramatrix were up at 11 o'clock at night working through these problems because we had a premiere tomorrow. We can't reschedule. Without that, we would not have been able to get as far as we have. Our time code sits in um, Taiwan's Smart Fitness Bureau, and if there are some malicious people who attempt to steal our code, it would be a great risk to our company. Formation provides us an easy, secure solution to protect our app. Very Matrix is a startup that has been around for over 20 years, and now we are developing the security solutions for the future. Customers will continue to innovate and come with ideas that we cannot even imagine. I can't tell you what the future holds, but I know that Verimetrics will be there to help protect that future. All right. So let's get into the webinar. Thank you very much for joining us today. 
Um, we'll start with just a quick round of introductions. I'm Sharon Sandu. I'm VP of Product at BZ America. We're the North American uh, division of BZ, and I'm located in Vancouver, Canada. Hey, Sharon, Sebastian Braun here. I'm the Director of Product Management at Verimatrix, uh, overseeing our cloud solutions. And uh, thanks for uh, having me here today, Sharon. And I'm Michael Rourke. I'm the Principal Solutions Architect at VZ America. I'm located in Chattanooga, Tennessee. So today what we'll do, um, for those that aren't familiar with VZ or Verimatrix, uh, Sebastian and I are gonna give a very quick introduction to uh, the organizations. And then we'll talk about the ABR receiver, which is a new product we're launching. Uh, we'll give an overview of that product and Michael Rourke will give us a demo of the user interface of that product. And we will have questions at the end. So please do stick around to the end. Michael and Sebastian and I will all be here answering your questions live. And we also have a poll that our moderator will uh, launch shortly. We'll go through those results at the end as well. So um, please do stick around. So VZ is a 96, oh, sorry, the poll just got in the way of my notes. <laughs> VZ is a 96 year old company and we started with radio receivers and then TV antennas. Throughout our history, we've adapted to changing markets and technologies and now we are focused on video head end solutions. We're a privately held business. Our global headquarters is in Germany and we have 11 offices worldwide. Um, I'm located at the VZ America office, which is headquartered in Vancouver, which is where I am as well. And we have sales and support staff located throughout Canada and the US. We serve over 300 video operators um, in North America and over 2,500 worldwide. At VZ, we're really focused on the needs of video operators for the long term. We believe in a customer first culture. Um, that becomes really obvious when we talk about ABR receiver, because I did actually start with a uh, customer request. So we really are responsive uh, and we love to get right into any uh, challenges that video operators are help, having uh, and how we can help. We're also, we're not leaving video. Uh, we've noticed a lot of vend vendors in our industry are starting to either shift away from video and focus on other parts of the network, um, but we remain the video experts. So we're here to help you with any of those video challenges and applications. And here's a quick look at kind of everything we do in video. Um, there's a lot on the screen, but we do, um, we can take videos from any kind of source. So it could be off air, uh, ASI, we encode local channels um, and with the ABR receiver, we, we accept ABR streams as well. We process those video streams. So that might be transcoding, encoding, encryption or decryption. And then we can output that in multiple formats, um, analog or QAM, or we can leave it in IP for linear or ABR applications. Uh, we specialize in end-to-end -end video. So uh, we are here to help you with any video needs that you have. Um, if you have uh, any questions about any of the other technologies on this slide, you know, like I said, we're, we're, we're focused on ABR receiver today, but um, if there's anything else you did want more information about, you can always reach out to our uh, sales or support staff. I'm gonna pass the baton over to Sebastian for the next couple minutes to introduce Fair Matrix. Hey, thanks, Sharon. Yeah, so as you saw in the video, you know, we're, we're um, focused on security. We're big believers in protecting um, the property that's uh, created by artists or app developers and creating um, uh, beautiful new experiences. And that's what we set out. We're really, really there to protect these experiences um, and allow our customers to continue to securely monetize um, their content. Uh, so, uh, you know, Primarily for the webinar here today, we'll be talking about our premium content uh, security solutions. Um, but again, as um, uh, Sharon also said, we do offer other products and other verticals, um, particularly to protect uh, applications, um, sensitive code, sensitive processes. So if you have questions about that, uh, feel free to reach out after that. You can go to the next slide, please. Give a quick overview. Um, so Verimatrix, we're also a global company. We've got about, um, you know, over 800 customers. Globally, we protect around half a billion um, devices. Um, and uh, I'm in, in, uh, in our um, operational headquarter in San Diego. Been around for 25 years. I think there was a comment made uh, in the video that we are the, uh, one of the oldest startups in the world that's been around for a long time. Um, that's really how it feels. And that's really how we treat our customers as well. We're there to um, you know, really make sure that security isn't in the way or isn't difficult to integrate and adopt 
uh, in the in the services that our customers provide to their subscribers. So really focused on um, bringing you know friendly security to the market, something that you know is there, easy to integrate, um, and and uh, uh, not in the way of success. And then you can go to the next slide. We see some of our customers. Um, and here you can see we've got, you know, for some of the products that I was talking about in the application shielding space, um, banks are using our security um, uh, products, um, as well as major um, global telcos. Um, and uh, we're seeing some great new um, uptake in, in OTT streaming. Um, we have interesting um, new products that we're securing in the live event uh, streaming space. Um, so yeah, we're we're really ubiquitous in security in, in that regard. Um, you can go to the next slide. Let's talk a little bit about our product portfolio. So today, specifically for ABR Receiver, um, we'll be talking about how our traditional broadcast services are integrated with ABR Receiver and how they help um, customers to upgrade uh, their video workflows. Um, uh, but that's not all we do. We also have a streaming media security um, division as well as a cybersecurity division. Um, and we're seeing a lot of uh, migration actually from sort of the traditional broadcast customers starting up streaming services using our um, new age uh, streaming uh, media security solutions. And then um, a lot of customers that we're seeing today in the market are uh, looking for services that are protecting more than the content, but also protect the investment that they make into applications, into their subscribers, um, and especially kind of around protecting um, data that uh, that subscriber data that they're seeing uh, in their in their applications and in their experiences. Thanks, uh, Sharon. Thank you. Uh, so VZ and Verimatrix have an existing partnership, and we have solutions um, that are deployed today for video operators. We have um, solutions that bulk encrypt and bulk decrypt Verimatrix content or Verimatrix DRM in content for linear IPTV solutions. So I'll just go through a quick couple examples. Um, with Premier Communications, they're using a VZ product to receive an IPTV lineup from a wholesale provider, that's Orion, and they receive that full lineup in the head end. They use VZ to bulk decrypt Verimatrix, and then they deliver and process that content for their subscriber network. Midwest Video Solutions or MVS. Um, well, in this case, MVS is the wholesale, pro wholesale provider. So they distribute streams to other video operators across multiple geographic regions. And what they did is they took um, VZ to replace Artes servers. So Artes is a, is a legacy platform from Verimatrix and uh, they replaced six Artes servers with one VZ platform. And that one VZ platform is a one RU box. It's high density and uh, very power efficient. So it saved them a huge amount of rack space and cooling costs. And what they're doing with that platform is they're encrypting to Verimatrix. So they're encrypting those streams and sending them out to other video operators. And many of MVS's customers are also using a VZ platform to bulk decrypt the Verimatrix and then process that for their subscribers. So a little bit more detail on how that works. So uh, the VZ solution, it's, it's called the Tangram and that's a high density um, and again, a very power efficient chassis, it's 1RU. It can bulk decrypt Verimatrix content. It can also bulk encrypt Verimatrix content. And we do have customers that are doing that in the same chassis. So they're bulk decrypting content, they're processing it. Um, they might be adding ads, for example. And once they've finished adding those ads, they can bulk encrypt again and add it to, um, to um, their residential network or maybe they're delivering it to other operators. Um, so Sebastian, for, I mean, there might be operators listening today that have older Artes servers um, in their network that they're looking to replace. And, and if they did contact um, VZ to help with that replacement, um, what else needs to be done on the Verimatrix side for that upgrade process? Yeah, so if they're an existing Verimatrix customer and they have, um, because uh, 4.3 are up, um, it is, there's, there's really not much that needs to be done. We need to um, uh, make a connection to the ABR receiver that is on the edge side. Um, and then uh, that, that uh, device can receive keys from the Verimatrix system that's already in place. Um, if, the, if we have customers that are not uh, already using Verimatrix, um, an easy way to get started is by uh, starting to use our VCAS solution in our cloud. Um, that usually leads to much faster um, integration time and, and setup time than on-prem. 
Um, and uh, yeah, happy to work with customers on that. But in general, the process is, is straightforward um, and similar to uh, connecting a client device, for example, to our um, security backend. And Michael, I know you're working with some of our joint customers uh, directly with uh, with this replacement. Any anything else to add, or did I miss anything? But one of the biggest advantages is the is the rack space. And you mentioned the cooling and power. It's the, the more devices that are in a rack, the more expensive it gets over time. Uh, your operating expenses go go up and up and up. And one of the advantages of the traditional uh, replacing the traditional Artez CSM combination is that you can go with a much denser solution. Our solution is modular, uh, and then it puts you in a position where your next gen upgrade can go directly to the cloud. So your all of your key management for the the CSM gets replaced, and it's in the cloud. So you get instant upgrades. Uh, you everything stays current. And what you have in your head end is simply the the encryption process and video processing, and all of the keys are secured in the cloud, uh, as Sebastian mentioned earlier. Thanks. All right, and off to the main event, the ABR receiver. Uh, maybe uh, let's talk a little bit about why this is actually a cool solution and. Um, how this can help, not just technically, but also from a business model perspective, uh, our, our customers and operators in general. So, you know, as you know, what we're seeing in the market is that um, streaming is really, uh, you know, making, a, making, making the, the leap and we see more and more adoption of it. Um, uh, Sharon, you've got a, a great stat here with, you know, billions of, of dollars spent um, on streaming services by subscribers. We're seeing sort of this big uh, fragmentation of streaming services, and and at some point, um, we're all speculating that these fragmented streaming ser services will be back aggregated in some shape or form. Um, and so, you know, we're seeing a lot of our customers making that leap as well and changing their video workflows from, you know, sort of the legacy qualm based solutions to IP or especially in the cloud. Um, and that that's a that's a big shift. Um, requires a lot of uh, investment. Um, and so it's nice that through this ABR solution, we can actually, um, you know, stagger some of the investments out. So for example, if you're, um, you know, at an edge site in a hotel, you don't necessarily have to go update uh, your consumer premise equipment right away. Um, so you can focus on upgrading your video services in the head end, um, you know, switch to ABR, switch to Dash, switch to HLS, um, create your new video workflows. Um, but at the same time, bring bring the devices that you have in these edge sites still along. So that's really um, a good financial incentive um, to, or or a, or a, yeah, a financial incentive to kind of uh, make that investment and make that investment a little bit more pal palatable um, as you're going through that migration. Yeah, absolutely. But um, but what we know about the edge sites, you know, a lot of these are hospitality sites. Uh, they've struggled during the pandemic. They don't necessarily have the budgets available to upgrade, you know, not just the TVs in every room, um, but, you know, a lot of these locations are cabled with coax. Um, there's not necessarily wired components in place to um, handle IP video and, and uh, internet. You know, we, we know from staying at hotels, usually the Wi-Fi is, is you know, using a really... Um, you know, a router and it's not always great connection. So it's, it's very intrusive and can be very expensive to upgrade all the cabling and make sure that, um, that hospitality rooms can uh, support IP or ABR TV. Uh, what we're seeing at, um, you know, this is kind of a, a, a look at the current situation for a lot of uh, hospitality deployment still, it's still very much qualm to qualm. Uh, and qualm video takes up a lot of space um, on, in the pipe, a lot of bandwidth. And that's really inefficient because really it's not the most profitable part of the services that operators offer to hospitality sites. Really the, the profitable part is those that data services that's way at the bottom there and it's, it's pretty small. Uh, also the kind of gear that you have that receives QAM and, and usually that gear is bulk decrypting cable card. Um, that gear is either end of life, it's end of support, it's just long in the tooth. So it, it's unreliable. I mean, that can just fail at any moment in time. And, and that's really risky to continue having at a property site. 
Meanwhile, you know, if residential services are moving to AVR and streaming and multi-screen, you've got head end engineers that are, are dipping their foot in both. You know, they have to keep their um, their eye on the qualm stuff, but they're also moving to IP and AVR. So that's really inefficient that you've got engineers, you know, looking at both. Um, and you know what we're hearing from a lot of operators that they want to move to ABR and, and, and multi-screen services, but it's really the hospitality sites that are sometimes holding them back because they just don't know what to do about that, that qualm to qualm um, infrastructure. So we are working with a number of operators uh, that are moving that distribution to IP. Um, so when you're using IP to IP video, um, well, first of all, the broadcast video isn't taking as much space in the bandwidth. Um, you've got way more space for data services, which is um, where you can upsell services, where you can um, you know, make a more profitable um, piece of the pie there. Your video gear is being upgraded to more modern gear that can receive IP and can bulk decrypt. Um, you know, we're working with customers that bulk decrypt Verimatrix, but also BIS, um, or there might be other DRM that you want to decrypt there. Um, this can be done over managed or an unmanaged network, so that's a great advantage. And with IP video, it's um, it's much more realistic and, and, and possible to have remote management and monitoring in place. So that reduces truck rolls if there are any issues on site, if you need to upgrade the services at the site for some reason. Um, and we're also hearing from operators that the channel lineup flexibility is great with IP video. So with qualm to qualm delivery, um, you're usually stuck with the same lineup going to each and every site. And, uh, and that's really inflexible. But when you move to IP video, then you can customize exactly what each property is getting, you know, whether it's a certain number of channels or certain packages. And as we've talked about, and Sebastian mentioned, you know, there, there's a trend to move towards multi-screen. Uh, we're also working with customers that are moving to AVR transcoding, packaging, and, and middleware that supports AVR services. Uh, that can be done on-prem or in the cloud, and, and, and we work with both of those models. Um, and, you know, as operators are moving to this kind of distribution, they're like, well, wait, wait a minute, we haven't talked about my hospitality customers and my, you know, what am I going to do about my business customers? So, you know, this is a real problem that we have heard from a number of operators. And, and Michael, I think you've probably heard it more than anyone since you work very closely with all our customers. Um, but, you know, they're asking, well, hold on, I, I don't know what to do, but hospitality, uh, they still need QAM or analog deployment. You know, as we mentioned, it's, it's not uh, possible for them to upgrade all their CPEs. So what do we do? And that's where the idea of the ABR receiver uh, comes in. So this is a product that is directly um, coming from customer requests. It's directly helping customers with that move to multi-screen and ABR. Um, we're helping customers um, progress with that move, but also, you know, not worrying about the hospitality side, you know, we can take care of it. So with the new product and, and with the next slide, I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through exactly how it works. Um, but we're able to repurpose those same ABR streams that operators are using for residential. We can reuse those for hospitality as well, which means that the hospitality site can stick with the CPE devices they have and, uh, and you can continue that migration to IP delivery. This is also an excellent solution for venues that where they have multiple screens. So, you know, it might be a sports bar or a restaurant where you've got multiple screens. Um, with ABR, um, you can't necessarily get those screens exactly in sync. And if there's a large uh, event on, uh, maybe a big sports game, you definitely want those screens in sync. So you definitely want to keep those uh, multicast if you can, because that uh, guarantees that the, the screens are in sync. So here's how it works. So in the head end, we've got this ABR TV service that you're delivering to residential networks um, and, and maybe to hospitality sites if that hospitality site is ready to accept ABR, but if they're not, um, what we can do is we can take the dash stream, we can bulk decrypt the Verimatrix, um, and you can output the IP transport stream as is, or after that, we've got options. So there's options to re-encrypt to ProIdium, um, you can output QAM or analog or, uh, or leave an IP, whatever, whatever the edge site needs. And that's the important thing there is that every edge property might have its own unique requirements and we can adapt whatever those requirements are. So we've partnered with Verimatrix for this product. Um, and that was, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a great partnership. And, and as we talked about, we've got some existing solutions and a, and a great existing partnership there. Um, we both, both organizations have a great understanding of video networks, of the deployments, the gear that's used to deliver to pay, deliver pay TV services. And together we are currently working with a large operator on this exact application. So, uh, so this operator is upgrading their 
qualm to qualm uh, delivery to hospitality, they're, they're migrating that to an ABR workflow and they're working directly with, with our team on, um, on the ABR receiver deployments, um, so in their lab and, and looking at how that's gonna work with their rollout. So we're very excited to work on that project together. So at a, um, a little bit more of a detailed look, and actually the, the next thing we're gonna do is go through the UI, because that's really exciting part. So um, Michael is gonna take us through the UI of the product. Um, we've developed the ABR receiver as part of the Inca IP video platform. So we'll look at that user interface and how, um, um, how the ABR receiver looks there. Um, but at, at its very base, what we do in the, um, in the ABR receiver is we receive those MPEG dash streams, we bulk decrypt the very matrix, and we convert it out to transport stream. And the additional options are there. And again, it's about what the edge site needs. You know, we've got it covered. So if the edge site still needs MPEG-2 and QAM, we can, we can convert it to those formats. Maybe the audio needs to be switched back to Dolby AC3. So we've got the audio transcode um, capabilities as well. Uh, and there's options to re-encrypt to ProAdium if you need that for hospitality TV. Uh, and there's options to output to analog. Uh, we're, we're actually quite surprised at how many sites still support analog um, and, and we continue to support analog as well. So, so we're here to help you with those kind of needs as well. And um, that's enough of me babbling. <laughs> Let's move on to actually seeing the product. So Michael, I'm gonna pass the, the baton over to you uh, to introduce the UI. Okay, so I, I did a, a brief video of the the Vidios UI. Um, it's it's very quick. There's a there's a lot more to it. Um, I wanted you to get a general idea of of how it operates. Um, but I would love for you to watch this, and then if you have any questions, please ask them at the end of the presentation. Yeah. So just a reminder, we are going to be um, available for questions. Um, at the end, so we're just we're going to sh um, show the demo and then we'll have a quick summary and we'll move to your questions. So please do stick around. Today, I'd like to give you a quick overview of Vidios, the UI overlay for the Inca product line. This is the interface for configuration, monitoring, and troubleshooting the devices in the Inca product portfolio, including the AVR receiver. Vidios is designed by operators for operators. The UI is designed to take the pain and suffering out of your day-to-day -day tasks. By utilizing the tools, telemetry, and remote management available in Vidios, you can reduce valuable truck rolls and windshield time. For example, we have a Tier 1 customer that is reporting an 84% reduction in troubleshooting time after incorporating Vidios into their video workflow. Vidios is built on pure HTML. There's no Java required. Vidios is available to view on anything with a browser, your desktop, laptop, iPad, or Android tablet. The UI is divided into parent and child processes, each with navigation tabs just below the process dashboard. The parent process exposes system level information, interface configurations, interface statistics, environmentals such as CPU temperature and fan speeds, your installed license options, as well as your installed hardware modules. The alarm tab displays persistent error conditions. The event log it shows a history of transient error conditions. The administration tab is where you find the following information and configurations. Device information such as NTP configuration and time zone. Your administrative interface configuration remote syslog, SNMP configuration. As well, there's package management for firmware updates and license upgrades. The child process is often referred to as the TS processor. As with the parent processor, the TS processor is divided into tabs. The sources tab is where you find the UDP, SRT, or MPEG dash configurations. Vidios has a generous use of hoverovers, allowing the operator to avoid the time necessary to navigate from screen to screen to gather information. In addition to the ability to configure inputs, this tab features an input monitor, which exposes thumbnails of the selected input, stream information such as throughput of the stream, program information, 
and PIDs. My favorite feature of the input monitor is the ability to gather a stream capture without marrying a switch port or utilizing a second device. All you have to do is click on the TS Capture button and the capture will download to the authenticated HTTP client. The IP Outputs tab is where we transcode against pre-configured profiles, MPEG-4 to MPEG-2, which is your typical application for hospitality. We also transcode to MPEG-4 and HEVC. We have the capability to handle advanced deinterlacing, which is great for high motion streams and services with streaming tickers. There's also an input and output monitor under this tab, which allows the operator to compare incoming and outgoing streams quickly and easily. The Profiles tab is where you define both your audio and your video transcodes. In regards to the ABR receiver, this is also where you define your Verimatrix specific information, your boot address, and your company ID. The Reports tab is continually improving release to release with the aim to provide as much information as possible at a glance, again, to make your day to day tasks easier. The administration tab under this child process is very straightforward. You have the uh, option to back up or restore or export. There is no TFTP or other antiquated methodologies required for backup or restore. The generated backup will download to the connected and authenticated HTTP client. The same is true for restore. As a selected backup file resident on the connected HTTP client may be uploaded and applied to the device regarding export. We all have or still do use Excel spreadsheets to keep track of our streams, IP assignments, or other input and output information. For each device, we can simply export to Excel from this tab, allowing us to keep track of our head end with little effort. If you're interested in a more detailed review of the Inca 4440, please reach out to your salesperson or to me directly, and we'll be happy to schedule a time to work with you. Thank you. All right, I think um, we just have a quick couple of summary slides and then we will get to your questions. All right, let's talk about some of the benefits of the Verimatrix Cloud Platform. As I said earlier, for those customers that already have um, Verimatrix or are using Verimatrix, uh, the, the, uh, the setup is, is a little bit shorter, but um, I also wanna talk a little bit about our Cloud Platform and the benefits of that, because that is really not much more um, work that needs to get done to get you in a position to actually start using um, the ABR receiver. So as part of our um, Cloud Platform, we're providing a complete um, OTT security solution for premium content um, approved by studios, recommended by studios. Um, and that really allows us to offer you harmonized rights management, um, po DRM policy options. Um, for example, if you wanted to, in your residential business, um, offer policies such as temporary download and offline viewing um, while still having the content encrypted, all of that um, is possible. Um, we have uh, uh, multi DRM included in that. So beyond the bare matrix DRM, there's also for um, bring your own device, the set of uh, multi DRMs available and, and to be used to really deliver video to any screen. In terms of integration, um, we offer a set of open and unified APIs, uh, both for encoders, packagers, um, and also on the client side. <clears throat> whether it's a whether it's a uh, Verimatrix client or a for example Widevine or or um, Play Ready or FPS client, one of the benefits or one of the reasons why we see our customers making that migration today is um, to number one be a little bit more nimble and experiment with uh, different offerings, but also not be bogged down by having to purchase hardware um, uh, for for the security system, install that, have that maintained. Um, and so on. The, the other nice part about it is it's really simple. It's simple to integrate, but it's also scalable in terms of the services that you're using um, and the pricing model that comes with this. So at the end of the day, um, you don't have to go and be completely over-provisioned and, and pay for that over-provisioning, but you can really pay um, for what you need when you need it. 
Um, and then, as I said, you know, rapid deployment and scaling of new services, that's a, a super important part. We can accelerate trials. Um, you know, we can sign you up very easily and, and help you integrate um, to launch your new service offerings. And as I said, scale um, for subscriber growth. In some cases, you know, you may see subscriber growth or in other cases, we, we see this a lot today um, in the uh, event-based distribution. Um, where you may need extra capacity or a lot of capacity to burst up for an event. Um, and once that event is over, um, go back to sort of the, 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 the normal um, line and, and use that you have. Uh, we also have a lot of pre-integrations, um, you know, integrated with all of your usual suspects um, on the encoding side and on the player side. And that's all I will say about the, our platform and how awesome it is. I got a couple quick questions for you, Sebastian. Yeah. So for customers out there that maybe are using Verimatrix for their linear um, TV mm -hmm. distribution, linear IPTV, but they want to move to multi-screen AVR and, and they're really interested in, in this AVR receiver product um, to help with that upgrade, how easy or hard is it to move from linear Verimatrix to OTT Verimatrix? Yeah, so as you said, for those customers that are already um, uh, using Verimatrix um, on-prem or perhaps already in our cloud, um, that is that is uh, not a big lift to add that on. So the system by default, if you're doing IPTV linear, um, or or maybe you're already doing um, multi DRM uh, linear distribution. So as long as you um, are on uh, VCAS 4.3 and above, um, which is the which is the uh, uh, current supported generation of VCAS, um, you are you are good to go with the uh, minimum effort to integrate and get that set up. Okay, and then what about customers that have already moved to multi-screen AVR? They're doing the AVR transcoding, packaging, DRM, middleware, but they're not currently using Bear Matrix. Um, but now okay. they're interested in using Bear Matrix. It's like, well, if I do that, then I can take care of my business customers too. How how would they add Bear Matrix? Yeah, so for that, we have the two options. As I said, we have um, you know still the uh, uh, classic deployment on prem if that's what you prefer. Um, there's probably a little bit more lead time to get that set up. As you know, you have to order hardware. We got to go set it up and 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 make the connection, networking, etc. Um, that the uh, what we're like I said, what we're seeing is this migration into our cloud for those services, and that really speeds up the initial deployment um, and the initial connection. So both options are available. Um, and if you're not using Verimatrix today, obviously we want to hear from you. Um, so please feel free and, and reach out and we'll find the best solution that, that works for you to get this uh, started. Awesome. Thanks, Sebastian. Um, so if you're not familiar with VZ products, uh, here's some reasons why you really should be. <laughs> First of all, we, we build modular platforms um, and they're really powerful modular platforms. And, and what that means, and our sales team like to say that we don't sell boat anchors. Um, it means that if you do need to change functionality at any time, upgrade the functionality in time, it's really easy to do. It, it's, a, it's a module change or a software license change, but you can, can continue using the same platform, which is great. Um, we talked about Artes as an example of how we have helped customers uh, save tons of rack space and cooling costs because all our platforms are really power efficient. They're one RU, they're high density. Um, so we've got many cases where customers have replaced legacy units, you know, it might be for uh, 8 BSB receive or, um, or transcoding, and we can bring that down to a really small number of um, chassis. Uh, Michael did a great demo of our user interface, and that has integrated monitoring and analytics. So that helps reduce operational costs. It's really easy and quick to troubleshoot streams. If there are any problems with the sources, uh, you can take streams stream samples as Michael showed. So uh, if you did need to capture any errors and, and take that back to, to the content provider, that, that's really easy to do as well. And our technical support team is always something to mention. So our support team, they're all certified by the SCTE as digital uh, video engineering professionals. So what that means is they understand video. They understand the problems with video, the challenges, what can go wrong. Um, so when a customer calls with maybe a configuration question or, or there is some issue happening with the source, uh, they know the equipment in a head end. They, they know that workflow. Um, they love getting into the details of our customer applications. Uh, so they're very responsive and they're very technically knowledgeable. So a quick summary of, um, of today's webinar, and then we're going to move on to questions. Um, we want you to continue planning your migration of video services to IP and AVR multi-screen. Um, don't worry about the hospitality side. We can help you cover that. 
Um, with an upgrade of the hospitality quam to quam network, upgrading that to IP, you can help reclaim bandwidth. You can also upsell data services. So that's a great um, way to um, increase the revenue on that side. With ABR receiver, we've got the edge covered. So we can still output QAM, we can still output analog, we've still got DRM capabilities for what you need at hospitality sites. So, um, so please do consider that as you move to ABR and as you need to continue serving your business customers. And with the ABR receiver and with an IP to IP workflow, um, you've got the benefit of working with centralized management and monitoring. So, um, so lots of great reasons to, to take a look and uh, we're always happy, the Verimatrix and the VZ teams, we're always happy to answer any additional questions you have about your particular application. Um, so thank you for joining today from both VZ and Verimatrix. Um, before we do jump to the questions, um, I thought we could review the poll. So maybe moderator, if you could reveal the poll results, um, we'll take a quick look at that. Um, so uh, the first question was about what type of company you work for. So we do have a lot of video operators on this session, which is great. Thank you so much for joining um, and resellers and integrators. If you do have specific applications that uh, this product might be used for, please do get in touch with, uh, with your application. Uh, the second question was about whether you've already launched a streaming solution in your network and the majority have. Um, so definitely, as we know, that's the way forward. And it looks like all of you um, have chosen that way forward. Uh, we asked if you were interested in the AVR receiver uh, as a solution in your video network. Uh, there's some maybes, there's some yeses, there's some noes, uh, there's some nas. So uh, a little bit of a mix. Um, but if, uh, if you did answer yes or maybe, um, again, we're, we're happy to tell you more. And we have a lot of existing Verimatrix customers here. So about 39% are currently using Verimatrix. Um, 32 aren't. So uh, of course, um, do contact Sebastian and his team if you're interested in learning more about Verimatrix. Uh, and finally, the last question is about if you're considering moving to, um, to ABR multi-screen in the future. So, um, so a few of you are planning that or you have already moved um, to ABR. So thank you for answering our poll. Really appreciate you guys participating. I'm going to stop um, sharing now and I am going to get to your questions. And I'm going to throw them all at Sebastian and Michael, because why not? <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, all right. So the first question um, is, I have different hospitality sites with different requirements. Can I use the ABR receiver to simultaneously deliver to these different edge sites? Michael Rourke, what do you think? Uh, the short answer is yes. So, for example, you could put the ABR receiver in your head end and then deliver IP to the different locations. And then let's say you have a, a, a QAM site, you can modulate to QAM for that. You could continue that IP delivery. We also do IP to IP where you could uh, establish a line of demarcation between the streams that are coming from your head end and what's going into the, to the site beyond. And we also, as you mentioned, we, we go all the way back to analog if that's what's required. You can also do a mix of those three if that's what's required. So as I said, the short answer is yes. <laughs> okay, and our next question is, ABR is difficult to deliver simultaneously. Can a subscriber's TV be synchronized using the ABR receiver so outputs are consistent? Um, Michael, I'm going to throw that at you again. So why is ABR so difficult to deliver simultaneously? Oh, well, it all depends on how you have your packager configured. Uh, there's always going to be a, a gap. Um, for example, with uh, the operator that we're working with, you mentioned earlier, there's, a, there's about a, a three second delay, which isn't terrible. But as you mentioned, if you're trying to synchronize, like in a sports bar, for example, you don't want somebody at the other end of the bar to yell goal and you haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Well, so, also with, that, with multiple screens, you're going to have like unicast connections between each um, screen and, and the server, right? So that, that that's kind of, right. Yeah. That's right. But if you deliver to the site via ABR in the top profile and then you modulate QAM, for example, everything's going to be completely. Uh, synchronized across the whole bar, uh, which is th th typically what you see already. The only th what we're talking about here is changing the transport to the location, but continuing to use the, the 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 legacy environment that they already have in place. 
Okay, our next question is, if the signal on the set-top box is weak, how can we solve this issue? Or set-up box, sorry, not set-top box. If the signal on the set-up box is weak. I'm not sure. That's a good question. I would love to be able to answer that, but I'll give it back to Michael. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, 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 I don't really have enough information to answer that question. Are we talking about a weak qualm? Are we talking about an issue with the IP delivery? Um, yeah. I'd love to, to speak to this person off, offline and we can address it with a little bit more information. Yeah, so that's what I would ask the, um, the person asked this question as well, that it, it's, it's a little bit hard to understand exactly what you mean, but please do get in touch directly and we can have a discussion. What kind of delay does this solution have? Is it fast enough to deliver sports content to my business subscribers? Well, that is gonna depend largely on their entire network, isn't it? Um, every operator is gonna have different equipment, different connections, different equipment at the edge site. Um, it, could we have a, do we have a standard um, delay metric? Um, I know, Michael, you've been working directly with one of the operators on ABR receive. What kind of um, metrics are you seeing on, on that device? Uh, like I said, I was, if we're seeing about a, a three second delay. Um, as far as specifically the ABR receiver, let's, let's take the whole delivery mechanism out, the packager out. Once the package content is on the back plane of the ABR receiver, we decrypt it. We desegment it, so we pull it back into a transport stream, and then we output it. And that um, th the lag that is introduced in that process is negligible. It's it's milliseconds, not seconds. So any kind of delay that that, that we'd be discussing is either introduced at the transport level or at the packaging level, not at the device itself. Yeah. Can I keep this solution in my head end or does it need to be processed at the edge? I think you can Short answer is yes, you can yeah, keep it you at can your head end at all. Keep it in your head <laughs> that, that just all depends on your topology and, and how you've architected your network. Absolutely. Uh, our next question about HLS, when will HLS be supported? Um, so I can answer that. We, we started with MPEG Dash because MPEG Dash has a very um, um, specific standard. Um, and so being able to receive MPEG dash and, and uh, architect our code to receive MPEG dash was a lot more straightforward than HLS. With HLS, there's multiple versions, there's multiple interpretations of the standards. Um, it's, it's a little bit of the wild, wild west uh, with HLS receive. Um, so we are, um, we are interested in, in developing HLS receive probably with, uh, with the customer that needs that because then we can take a look at the specific version that's needed, the specific way it's been implemented. Um, probably in, in partnership with a packaging company as well. So it's something we're looking into kind of exactly where do we want to start with, uh, with which packager, which um, you know, ecosystem, um, but it's, it's, I don't have specific dates at this stage. So kind of stay tuned. And maybe if I add from a very matrix perspective and key delivery, um, you know, we, I, I'd love to talk about that as well. Um, as you said, Sharon, with the customer, okay. it's always better to actually have some, some hands-on um, things that we can that we can dig into um, but we do support that from a license delivery perspective we support both mpeg dash and hls today we see customers use both obviously depending on device class um, and the type of device that they're that they're sending to but yeah interested to have a conversation on on that as well actually sebastian i just thought of another um question there so if a customer was using Verimatrix for encrypting their hls um and they, they were using something else for Dash for, for whatever reason. Um, could they easily add bare matrix to the Dash as well, just for the, the business properties? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay. so yeah, if, if, if you did want to add on the Dash, that's, that's definitely easy to do for the business side. Mm -hmm. uh, and the next question is similar, um, is receiving Dash the only option at the edge site? Um, for ABR receive, yeah, MPEG Dash is the only option, but if you, um, if you were still delivering IP um, video linear, we can accept IP um, linear uh, streams. Um, yeah, again, you know, whatever top topology you've got there, we can take a look at. We've got a lot of options for different reception and uh, and output options. SRT is another option for receive, uh, 8PSB and ASI. So um, yeah, let us know what you need. And as you mentioned, HLS is something that that we're we're looking at. And the issue is which version to 
to start off with. So if we have a customer out there that is doing a pure HLS delivery mechanism, then we'd love to talk to you and see what version you're using. And we can look at moving forward as a partner and, and developing that with you. Yeah. Someone is asking, where can I download the recording of the meetings? I'm flattered you want to watch it all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Our marketing team will send out a post a webinar uh, email just thanking you all for joining and uh, anyone who registered and that will include a link to, uh, to the recording. So, um, so that will be coming in the next couple of days. Uh, does the 4440 ABR transcoder support the H265 codec? Uh, yes, so we do have um, the ability to transcode to and from HEVC. Um, at the moment, our MPEG dash receive is um, MPEG4 in MPEG dash, but we can transcode it to HEVC. Is that what you need? Um, yeah, so happy to help with any HEVC requirements. How many incoming streams can be transcoded at the same time on the 4440? Um, so, um, Tony, the, I, I would uh, advise you to get in touch with one of our sales teams because we'll take a look at, you know, do you need MPEG-4 or 2 or HEVC? Uh, we can transcode up to, um, and it also depends if you're doing linear ABR. So, you know, we can transcode 40 HD in some cases um, and, and even more in other cases. So. Uh, HD, SD matters, the codec matters, <laughs> um, but we do have specific numbers available so we can help you uh, determine exactly which density you'd, you'd get depending on what, what you're looking to transcode. Um, our next question, this looks like a package solution. We use the 4440 currently to stream AVR. Uh, can we use the AVR receiver at the customer premise to grab the existing streams via fiber transport and convert to QAM? Is Verimatrix required? Um, Ver Verimatrix, if you don't have uh, a need to encrypt the streams between your head end and the, the customer premise, maybe you've got your own yeah, direct fiber line and it's a private network. If you don't need the encryption, um, the answer is no, you don't need to decrypt Verimatrix. We do have the ability to receive dash streams in the clear as well. Um, so we can help you with that solution. Um, the last question is, can you play a song on the guitar in your background? And the answer is yes, but I won't. Um, I do know only right. one song on the guitar. <laughs> I, it's, it's actually my husband's guitar. I play the piano, um, but, um, but we'll do the musical uh, session another time. <laughs> uh, has any work been done testing this product against something like Minerva's hosted your TV product where the service provider does not actually control the head end? Um, part of the video solution? The short answer is yes. Okay. Uh, it really doesn't matter because part of the, the Your TV product has to do with middleware as much as it does um, the delivery mechanism. So for us, it's all a matter of being able to pull the, the MPEG stream into the ABR receiver and, and then present it as a transport stream to the, the edge site or the, the head end, depending on what you're looking at. So whether it's Minerva's Your TV, which does use very matrix or, or not, it's, it's all about the transport. That's the, that's the goal is to be able to take these edge sites that couldn't otherwise uh, monetarily and realistically uh, uh, convert over to ABR. We'd like to be able to 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 provide those streams to those more like leg, more legacy tended customers. Okay, um, we have a question about transcoding directly from ATSC three to ABR. Uh, ATSC three is a new uh, module that the BZ America team is working on, so that will be released later this year, uh, and that will um, have options to transcode as well in the same chassis. Um, if you did also want to package those streams back to ABR, um, yeah, we could look into that for you. So do, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll keep in touch about more details about the ATSC3 receiver as we, um, as we get closer to that launch. We have no more open questions, gentlemen. Is there anything else anybody wanted to touch on before we, uh, we end the, the webinar? No, I, I want to thank you, Sharon. Thank you so much for having me to here today. It's great, um, you know, doing this with you, this outreach, educating our customers um, and hopefully future customers. 
Um, looking forward to doing more with you guys in the future about that. We're excited. Yeah, and thank you for joining. It's been fun to uh, put this together. So thank you both for joining today. Thank you. All right, have a great day. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Right. Bye. -bye.